I love where I'm at right now. I love where all the kids are at. I love hearing them, you know, feel good about themselves and be on the right paths. And, you know, obviously, you know, no one's perfect and it's not always, you know, 100%, but I love where everyone is. And I'm just excited about watching them fly and, and soar and do their things. And, uh, and I got some things I want to do too. So we're, you know, we're going to be doing some moving the next few years. What? What? Not moving. Oh. No. <laughs> oh, I'm like okay. moving. I may be married to a plastic surgeon, but I'm 98% real. In 2012, Heather Dubro joined the season seven cast of The Real Housewives of Orange County. But five years and five seasons later, she decided to leave the hit show in 2017. I haven't seen the kids in three days. But you know what I want to do when we leave here? Hmm. I want to put on sweatpants, wash my face off, sit on the floor with them. And just hang out. Yes, yes, just hang out. Then in 2021, Heather delighted her legions of faithful fans when she announced she was returning to the beloved franchise for season 16, which premiered last December. Guys, back. Heather is back, along with her loving husband, Terry, and their four beautiful children, 18-year-old twins, Nick and Max, 15-year-old Katarina, aka Kat, and 11-year-old Coco. People are always asking us why we decided to go back to Real Housewives. And, you know, there were a few reasons, but one of the big reasons we wanted to come back was because we've got four kids, they're different genders, different sexualities, and all at interesting places in their lives, figuring out who they are and where they belong as humans. And, you know, I, I've always felt like our job as parents is to raise independent, healthy, functioning humans. And that's what we're trying to do. And the conversations that go on in our house and the way our kids talk to us and interact, we want more of those conversations to be going on in other families, you know, across the country. The Dubrow's oldest daughter, Max, came out publicly as bisexual in 2020, while Kat first told family and friends she was a lesbian roughly a year ago. I thought, okay, so we've got these four kids and they're different genders, different sexualities, and wouldn't it be cool to show our version of what our normal family looks like. During Heather's December 2021 appearance on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, she explained the main reason she wanted to return to The Real Housewives was to create a positive dialogue around LGBTQ issues by giving viewers a good look at what her normal family looks like. For me, it had to be something more. Like, what yes. am I, what, what is it for us? And what, yes. how can we help other people? And right. what are we doing here? There you go. Didn't Max just appear in a picture with a, a, a rainbow flag? No, Isn't that how well, she announced it? That's how she announced it to the public. That's how she announced it to me, oh, even yeah, though I already knew. But I, but she had told me. Oh, okay. So, so Max and I obviously had spoken about it a few times, and we told her that story, which was so funny because she told me, and then a few months later, do you not know the story? She called, she texted me, and goes, "I got to tell you something." I'm like, "What?" She's like, "I'm bisexual." I'm like, "Yeah, I know. Remember we talked about it?" She was like, "Oh, I didn't think you remembered because I guess I didn't make a big deal about it." And then with Katarina, Katarina had been talking about her sexuality for some time. And I think one of the great things about these youths today is that they talk about these things. I mean, I was raised by 1950s parents. They talked about nothing. I had no idea. These kids, they talk about everything. And I think it's so, so important. So Katarina had been talking about her sexuality for a while, but then one day she decided to drop in our family group text, um, by the way, I'm a lesbian, I didn't see it. And I was just pissed because the dogs pooped in the house, so obviously someone didn't take them out. So literally back to back, it was, hey guys, I just want you to know I'm a lesbian. Um, the dogs pooped in the house, WTF, that's what I wrote, and they have never let me forget that. <laughs> all I cared about was creating an environment where they all felt safe, comfortable. When Max came out as bisexual a few years ago, you know, it was very public and um, we were just a flooded with messages and some were, you know, most were like incredibly beautiful, very supportive, very loving. And then there were all these other messages like they were, you know, parents estranged from their children, that they didn't handle it properly, children that had, you know, taken their own lives because they felt like they didn't have a safe space. And it just completely broke my heart and it made me feel like our message and our purpose is to go beyond these conversations and this environment with our kids, but keep those conversations going in other areas. Yeah, and your sexual preferences are as natural as the color of your eyes. Yeah. It's biology. So, so don't have anxiety about it if you can not. You know, it's easier when your parents are very accepting. But uh, there's nothing unusual no. about having blue eyes or brown eyes or beautiful hazel eyes like I have.
See, we're talking about you. <laughs> Just you know, it, it always comes back to Sorry you. Sorry about that. So you know. Obviously, all of our children are different. Um, and even though, you know, they're in the same household and the same parents, there's nature and there's nurture and we can nurture the same way, but nature does prevail. But I have to say, all of them are really just good kids. They're very um, non-judgmental, very inclusive and very supportive. So Nick, Nick is like one of those guys who's, he's salt of the earth, like Everybody everyone likes, likes Nick. Nick. Yeah. yeah, everyone likes Nicky. He's just a really, he's a good kid and he's solid. He's just a great guy. He does well in school. He plays sports. He's got a ton of friends. He's, he's just like a stand-up, great, fabulous guy. Yeah, he doesn't compare no. to other people. He, he wants everybody to be happy. He has Successful. zero hate in his heart. Not jealous. No snark at no. all. Very different than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. And then Max is much more cerebral. She likes school, she likes studying, she likes learning. She's, yeah, she's a complicated thinker. She, you know, has written a, a really successful book. She's got a podcast. She, um, she's a really interesting kid. She has a very significant point of view and she's willing to share it with you. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh cats, cats just. Cat is, dare the, I say yeah, it, the good, good one. one. Yeah. yeah. Except Cat. for those two years. Yeah, she had a Because they all go through run. a douchey stage. But they just do. That's Cat, nice. every time she goes to a new school or she has a new series of advisors, we get the letter home. I mean, from like, her. like the letter. In my 43 years I've never teaching had a this class, like this, this she is. She lights up. The I've room. never sent this letter out before. She's she that person. She makes people a better human yeah. by just knowing her. I mean, that's her. She's like a really incredible kid. Kat is someone who, when she sets her mind to something, she does it. She's like, you know, people have the whiteboard and everything and they make, you yeah. know, manifest lists. She will write things on her, like a little piece of paper and she'll stick it on her mirror, accomplishes all of it. Get straight A's, get the lead in the play, um, write a this, like whatever it is, do a split. She, she does it. Coco just turned 11 and um, Coco's our little miracle child. So we had the twins by in vitro and then we had cat by in vitro and um, thought we were done. And apparently, I don't know if you know this, but if you have sex, you can actually get pregnant. Like and, that's a thing. And this was so a, you know. a weirdly dry spell. It was a huge dry spell. It was because probably immaculate conception I was because I was overworked and nothing. very overweight and uh, she wasn't very interested, but it happened anyway. I don't, I, I don't remember it. Yeah. No, I, anyway, Coco's always been incredibly strong-willed. I mean, people used to laugh on the show. Like, she was always like, no, no. She was little. She was so funny. One, two, three. You say four. Oh, say four. Oh, say four. Three. Oh, she wants to say three because she's three. Okay, say three. Three. Okay, stand over there. She's a very complex, layered person. Yeah. And she's going through a lot of self-exploration right now. And um, she talks a lot about reincarnation. Yeah. She does. She talks about reincarnation. She's curious about how one comes back into the world, if that's a choice. Um, Coco, everyone's always sort of looked at Coco because she dresses, quote, like a boy, which is, you know, I hate those kinds of labels. You know, it's clothing. You know, clothing should just be clothing at this point. I just want them to feel confident and good walking out the door. And I'm like, hey, you want to wear uh, a tie? You want to wear a suit? You want to, oh, I don't care. Wear what, it, wear what makes you happy. Right? Life is short. Be happy. Very, very interesting. She's a very cool kid. Yeah. And I think if you want to have good relationships with your kids, always understand it's not about you. Yeah. It's about them. And I think you should let all of your preconceived notions go when it comes to raising children and just take your cues from them. Yeah, I think moms have a really bum rap right now, honestly, because the roles of motherhood have just completely changed. It used to be really binary. You know, you were a stay-at-home mom or you were a working mom and everyone butted heads. But now you're expected to be, you know, a, a, a full-time mother, have an incredibly successful career, amazing relationship with your partner, great relationships with your friends, make gourmet paleo gluten-free meals and put it all on social media flawlessly for everyone to admire and I think it's all bull and it's not actually attainable. And I think what we're doing is we're creating mothers and parents that 
feel like they're not good enough because they're seeing all these glossy visions of what they're supposed to be and we're not helping each other. And so one of our purposes, I feel, as the parents of these four unique kids is to have those conversations, not with them, but open up conversations everywhere. While Kat came out to her family and friends more than a year ago, the rest of the world will find out during this season of The Real Housewives of Orange County. Yeah, it feels kind of weird that everyone's about to know because my family and my friends and everyone that I've wanted to know has known for like over a year. So it's kind of odd to me that people outside of my like bubble don't really know. And it's not really a big deal to me. It's not really like huge for me. In one episode, viewers will see Kat having to deal with some upsetting feedback on social media. Kat and I were hanging out and she told me that she was gonna take down her lesbian flag. She just kind of told me matter of factly and I was like, why? And it was because someone made a comment on TikTok. And I thought, I mean, how did that make you feel? Um, it was really upsetting, especially because at that specific time, I was having some trouble with people in my school saying like the F slur, just like not understanding and not listening when I was trying to tell them things like this is not okay. So seeing that like in my real life and then seeing it on my online life, like it was just getting very, like it was like a lot. So I just decided that maybe I should take it down. Max, did you, did you see any negative things when you came out? Um, I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing about any of this, but <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there's the normal amount of trolls and stuff as there is for anyone online. So it doesn't really matter what you're saying at all because <laughs> you're going to get some kind of negative feedback. But I, my, my response was pretty positive and everyone's pretty accepting and cool. And then the ones that are negative, I kind of just ignore because I don't really care. <laughs> so they don't really phase me. I mean, my family's very supportive and I'm really lucky to have grown up um, with such a supportive, positive, open family who really just doesn't care what you are, who you are, as long as you're happy. And honestly, my friends, I have three friends, they all really don't care, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. I have three friends. And they're all mostly gay anyway, so, you know, they're, they're cool. <laughs> and then going to school, I mean, no one's gonna say anything to my face. That's why social media is so easy, is because they can hide behind a screen or something. Very true. Um, but, you know, I don't, none of them really care anyway. <laughs> so that was good. Coco, how do you feel about Max and Kat like talking about their sexuality and embracing who they are and like how does that affect you? And, and what do you think about them doing it publicly? Uh, I'm proud of them. Oh, I'm yeah. proud of them? I don't know. Uh, I think I'm proud of them. <laughs> I'm really grateful that first off, I have Max as an older sister and and second off, that she has already gone through all You're of this. Welcome. Yeah, <laughs> and she she Aved took the it way. first. Yeah, yeah. because um, there was like the other night I was feeling really stressed about it, and I think I like went into your room and we were talking, and I had just pretty much just gone back onto Max's post and seen the feedback and seen how like genuinely supportive the audience that like my mom has is and just everyone is and like my relatives, and um, seeing my sister be so proud and I've never seen her been like shy or just like, I don't really know if like this is like a good time to come out or I don't know how I feel about hanging out with these people because they're not gonna be like comfortable with me. It's, she's so comfortable with herself and to see her be so comfortable confident, with herself, yeah. confident and comfortable, it just makes me feel like, like I have nothing to worry about. I am yeah. glad that I could be the person to do it first because I am, you know, the confident one, the one who really doesn't care and I'm just like genuinely me and that's it. And so if I can, you know, start this journey of self-expression and figuring out who we are publicly or privately, and they can learn from that um, in any way, social media or in person or anything, then I'm glad about that. But <laughs> she definitely has a nice pathway now. Yeah. While Kat has been grateful to lean on her big sister, they both rely on the love and incredible support they get from their mother. My mom is the best mom, I know, and that's like very cliche, okay, but it's very cliche, but it's true. And honestly, I wouldn't be saying that if it wasn't true, <laughs> very brutally honest. But, um, you know, she, even if she doesn't understand something, she tries very hard and she learns and teaches herself and she grows with us and teaches us how to grow. And 
She is a really strong female role model for me. I probably for them too, but you know, I look up to her and everything she does. She's extremely confident. She knows what she wants and she goes for it. And she is like one of the coolest people I know. But I think. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, stop there. Put it in the end. <laughs> but with me personally, she, you know, will constantly just always be there for me. I text her probably more than I've talked, texted anyone in my life. <laughs> I text her every second of every day. That's true. And she has the best advice because she always knows what she's talking about. And if she doesn't, she will ask someone who does. Thank you. That was really sweet. Yeah, my mom has been my probably biggest support system throughout everything that's happened through my life, which is like expected as a mother, but I'm really grateful for my mom because it's really easy to talk to her. It's not like I have to build up courage or like go, oh crap, like I don't know how to tell my mom this. Like I could just walk in and be like, mom, like I need to tell you what happened at school today. Or I could even text it or call it. It's, she's just made me feel so comfortable with talking with her and I could share anything with her and just feel immediately comfortable. Um, like Max said, if, even if she doesn't understand what I'm going through, she will learn and she'll try to educate herself the best she can. She's asked me trillions of questions that really show she's cared. Like she's asked me about pronouns, she's asked me about sexualities. Anytime she's had a question, she's never been afraid to ask me and that's made me feel so comfortable that anytime I have a question, I'm never afraid to ask her. And she always gives me the best advice and even if I don't know what I want to hear, she probably knows what I want to hear. I've learned so much from them. I mean, truly, these guys are, you know, and obviously I don't know everything, but they, they've taught me a lot and I appreciate that. Cause you're a boomer. <laughs> I'm not a boomer, dad's a boomer. I'm I 10 and a half to years younger. Beg to differ. Not a boomer. <laughs> <laughs>